Shalom. Giving all praises and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh, Bahashem, Racha HaKwadash. Giving double honors to the apostles and elders of great millstone have told us this truth that a constant rule and will through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh, I want to say Shalom to the sincere brothers, the believers that's pushing this word wholeheartedly in truth and sincerity that are not wavering to the left nor to the right, but constantly standing on that straight and narrow fighting for your crowns in these last days that we are truly living in. I want to say Shalom to the few sisters, the Aquafs that are out there. Shalom to the Israelite foreigners, those that may look like the other nations, but their seed line goes back into our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Shalom unto you. This is the brother Ira coming back with another less to love and edify and feed the lambs of the Lord. Okay. All right. Which prophecy is speaking and everything that is taking place around the world. We correlate these events via the way of biblical prophecy okay which is found in the scriptures all right i just as we've been saying through the holy spirit okay starting off with the apostles and elders of great millstone these things are going to take place all right and especially in the times that we are living in okay there's going to be a time where there was going to be an economic collapse they were going to change the system we see where the digital play is heading towards, all right, which is going to be that mark, the hour of temptation. World War III is brewing up right in front of our faces, okay? And we're getting ready to see the return of who the world ignorantly called Jesus Christ, whose true name is Yahweh Shai, okay? All things are at hand, all right? And this is what you would call prophecy, okay? Revelations 1 verse 3. Blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. All right, the time is at hand. Okay. The time is at hand. Because what are we also seeing that is taking place around the world? You're seeing a lot of unification between these different countries. All right. Dealing with Russia, Iran, China. Saudi Arabia, South Africa, India. You even have talks about Mexico, I right, joining BRICS. Okay. I right, which this is leading all towards okay, the doing away of the petrodollar. Okay. Everything is working together, I right, simultaneously, I right, to usher in the last pieces of the major prophecy, okay? All right, and this is where we've been standing on our, our tower speaking, okay? All these things into play, all right? As the Lord has given us power, all right, in order to do so, all right? This is the word prophetia. Strong's G, 4394. Prophetia. 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 A discourse emanating from divine inspiration and declaring the purpose of the Most High, I, whose true name is Yahweh, whether by reproving and admonishing the wicked or comforting the afflicted or revealing things hidden, especially by foretelling future events. Okay. I, in these things that we have been telling you, you can clearly see them. You be the judge. Prophecy is what's speaking. I, as time Continues to keep being sped up, all for whose sake? The elect's sake, all right? Because Yahweh by Shema is speeding the days all for the elect's sake, okay? Babylon is falling, and this is what we're seeing, okay? We're seeing the end, all right? These other nations, they're banding together, all right, against the West, all right, which is spoken about also in the book of what? Isaiah, the 14th chapter, okay? Matter of fact, let's get that real fast. This is Isaiah chapter 14, verse 10. All they shall speak and say unto thee, Art thou also become weak as we? Art thou become like unto us? Thy pump is brought down to the grave in the noise of thy vows. The worms is spread under thee, and the worms cover thee. Because all these different nations, okay, are now uplifting themselves and now changing their views and their ways, okay, 
in order for their own purpose, their own sovereignty, all right, their own alliance, all right, to make their country better, okay? And these other nations are able to puff up themselves at America because what? They have nuclear arms, okay? Which this is what this last war is going to end in, okay? A nuclear conflict where these missiles will be shot off to the what the ends of the world. I right? spoken about in a book of Second Ezra, the 16th chapter. That is what's going to be the end of Esau's world. Okay, because the Edomites are ruling as of now. All right, and their world is getting ready to come to an end. All right, that is why these things is taking place. Matter of fact. This is Iran versus Saudi Arabia's beliefs. Iran is largely Shia Muslim, while Saudi Arabia sees itself as the leading Sunni Muslim power. All right? So the fact that China, all right, under the leadership of Xi Jinping, was able to unify Iran and Saudi Arabia right, is something powerful in itself. When you look at the fact that these two Muslim nations, okay, have totally different beliefs, all right, and conflicts between each other, okay, all right? And this is what is taking place right in front of our very eyes, all right, dealing with Russia and China being the top spearheads, okay, against the, uh, the, the, the hegemony and push against um, the West, you see? <clears throat> Major moves is being done all through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Okay, now. Bear with me for a second. Let me play this. Woke liberalism is collapsing all over the world. And in many ways, we have Russia and China to thank for it. We're going to see precisely how a new world order is rising that's pushing back against the woke insanity of liberal leftists and why the days of the adults in D.C. really are coming to an end. You are not going to want to miss this. A number of pundits are coming to the realization that we really are moving into a fundamentally new world order, a world order that's increasingly rejecting woke liberalism and reawakening the great spheres of ancient civilizations. This is what we've been tracking with now on this channel for what, last six years, the rise of a new conservative age, an age where global populations are returning to nation, culture, custom, and tradition as a backlash against a world order dominated by woke leftist liberal institutions and organizations like the WEF and the EU. And I've got to admit, even against the backdrop of Brexit and the election of Donald Trump a few years back, I never imagined that the entire world order would change as fast as it's happening right now. For the past year, the bumbling Biden administration has been trying to get virtually every nation on the planet to arm Ukraine and sanction Russia. Arm Ukraine and sanction Russia. They have failed miserably on both counts. Right now, as we speak, nearly 90% of the world's population refuses to arm Ukraine or sanction Russia. You have to let that hit you, 90%. And in the process over the last year, Russia's used this opportunity to strengthen ties with many of these nations, so much so that Thomas Fatsi over at Unheard is asking, who is really isolating whom here? I mean, if you take a step back, it's actually the woke West that looks increasingly isolated in this emerging civilizational world. Since the start of Russia's special military operation in Ukraine, China and Russia boosted their bilateral trade by more than 30%. They've committed to massive building and infrastructure projects through what's called the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, which is fast becoming the largest economic organization in the world. It includes nations such as India, Pakistan, Iran, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, encompassing 40% of the world's population and 30% of the global GDP. This week at the historic summit between Russia and China, President Putin announced that he was in favor of designating the Chinese yuan as the default currency within that rising parallel economy. 
Because of the sanctions imposed on Russia by U.S. and its allies, Russia's largely weaned itself off the dollar to do business with China and yuan and ruble exchanges. Perhaps most importantly, though, China's embraced Russia's view, as espoused by Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov, that this ultimately is not about Ukraine at all. It reflects the battle over the world order and what it will look like. It's being widely reported that at the end of their summit, President Xi's final words to Putin were, change is coming that hasn't happened in a hundred years, and we are driving this change together. Change is coming that hasn't happened in a hundred years, and the rising civilization states of Russia and China are driving this together. It was an absolutely astonishing statement, a one that the adults in D.C. are completely clueless on. And again, as Thomas Fatsi observes, the real problem here for the liberal world order is that much of that 90% of the world is taking Russia and China's side. Shortly after President Xi departed from Moscow, delegations from over 40 African nations attended an official conference entitled Russia and Africa in a Multipolar World. There, Putin announced that Russia would be forgiving billions of dollars of African debt, and this is key, as a gesture of solidarity in their support for traditional moral values and the resistance against the insanity of the woke West. And of course, all of... I, because you see as the one and the ruble is being backed by gold. Okay, that is what the push is for, all right? For their currency to be backed by gold, for them to do these different deals amongst themselves, all right, and to get off of the U.S. dollar, okay, that is what we're seeing right in front of our very eyes, all right? And everybody's pretty much getting on board with, all right, the BRICS nations, okay? And this is what Yahweh Bashim Yahweh is doing, okay? He's using Vladimir Putin, because Vladimir Putin is nothing more than a tool used by Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai. I remember the, the scriptures say that the king's heart is in the hands of the Lord. Okay? All right? And also to fulfill what? Major pieces of prophecy because Putin is going to be a guard unto these other nations. Okay? Let's go over here to the book of Jeremiah chapter 38. I'm sorry. Jeremiah 38. I'm thinking Ezekiel. It's Ezekiel 38. Slack, you bear with me for a second. Ezekiel 38, okay? <clears throat> Prophecy about Gog and future invasion of Israel, all right? Which ultimately is talking, this is going into America, okay? This is a a, a deep saying, all right? And, 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 you know, this is what the Lord has revealed unto his servants, okay? If you can receive it. All right. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Gog, the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and prophesy against him. OK, because those lands are being occupied by what those Russians today. All right. Which the original um, people of the land are not in that land. OK, it says, and say, thus saith the Lord. Power, behold, I am against thee, O Gog, and chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws, and I will bring thee forth in all thine army, horses and horsemen, all of them clothed with all sorts of armor, even a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords. All right, so you see the mobilization all right, of these countries and the different nations. I arming themselves okay china's troops they're arming themselves um north korea i right, they're pretty much at pretty much a hundred and something million people now arming themselves getting ready for war they recently just had joint military um um practices out in the uh, the gulf of omen okay this is what is taking place while you having the war in Ukraine going on, okay? So these troops are all being armed, okay, in order for what? This last war, all right? The scriptures say, what? The third war cometh quickly, okay? Things are moving fast, all right? It says Persia, Ethiopia, and Libya, with them, all of them, with shields and helmets, 
Gomar and all his bands, the house of Togoma of the north quarters and all his bands, and many people with thee. Be thou prepared and prepare for thyself, thou and all thine company that are assembled unto thee, and be thou a guard unto them. You see? So Russia is 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 the leading catalyst, all right, to being what? A guard unto these different nations, okay? As being a, the spearhead. I to push against what the West. All right, this is all via prof via the way of Bible prophecy. Okay, I right? in order to lead what unto the end. Okay, because those nukes will fly. All right. Matter of fact, let's go back to the video because I don't want to make this too long. All of this follows on the heels of the astonishing peace deal and rapprochement between Saudi Arabia and Iran brokered by China. The U.S. was left completely out in the cold. What's going on here? What's happening? You got to click on that link below. Pretty in their support for traditional moral values and the resistance against the insanity of the woke West. And of course, all of this follows on the heels of the astonishing peace deal and rapprochement between Saudi Arabia and Iran brokered by China. The U.S. was left completely out in the cold. What's going on here? What's happening? What kind of world is rising right before our very eyes? Well, we're going to find that out. But first, gang, you got to click on that link below. And in all actuality, the real world that is rising right in front of the world's very eyes is really the nation of Israel, right? The Lord's true people, right, that he has chosen since the foundation of the world, okay? Even though that these other nations... Okay, they're mobilizing, they're setting up their system, they're working together, so on and so forth. Right? It does not mean that they're going to take the next power seat right, in order to control the world, right? Because the new world to come is going to be ran under who? The Israelites, okay? This is Psalms chapter 68. <clears throat> I'm going to start at verse 12. It says, The kings of armies did flee a space, and, sh and she that tarried at home divided the spoils. It says, Though ye have leaned among the pots, yet ye shall be as the wings of a dove covered with silver and her feathers with yellow gold. When the almighty scatter of kings in it, it was white as snow in Solomon. It says the hills of the most, the hill of the most high is as the hill of Bashan, and the hill, the high hill, as the hill of Bashan. It says, Why leap ye, ye high hills? This is the hill which the most high desire to dwell in. Yeah, the Lord will dwell in it forever. Okay, the chariots of the most high are twenty thousand, even thousands of angels. The Lord is among them, as in Sinai. In the holy place, all right, because when this war takes place, all right, full blown out war, all right, Yahweh Shai will make his return to what? Subdue all the rest of the kings. All these things that are taking place is all leading up to what? Israel being restored as the top mountain, the top government, all right, in the world. We will take the place of hegemon in the world. Okay, via the way of Yahweh Shai taking what is rightfully his, you see, all right? But these nations have a role in the Most High's movie, okay, which everything is playing out perfectly. Prophecy is speaking, okay? We really don't have that much longer here in Babylon the Great, all right? Um, um, we'll play this last little segment of it. All right, so we're at the 20 minute mark. Play this last little segment. And um, I'm going to get this last scripture and I'm going to pretty much close it out. Hello, and try for yourself the new technology behind My Pillow 2.0. It's amazing. Mike Lindell is absolutely. Somebody want that pillow. A neo civil. An increasingly post-globalist world, we're seeing three overall trends 
whereby the world order is basically radically recalibrating. And these three trends are what we might call neo-nationalist projects, neo-tribalist projects, and neo-civilizationalist projects. So neo-nationalism involves a renewed sense of national sovereignty, a restoration of the nation state against the anti-nationalist forces of liberal globalism. So this is what's animating, animating the MAGA movement here in the United States, Going or the Brexit fail. in the UK, or the incredibly successful government of Viktor Orban in Hungary. All futile. But this renewed civic nationalism is not the only kind of nationalism that's emerging. There's also what scholars call a new tribalism or secessionist tendencies where populations want to break away from the nation state and form their own independent republics organized around a common region, race, or religion. This is exactly what we saw in the Donbass region in eastern Ukraine and the breakaway republics of Donetsk and Lugansk. And then on top of it all, the titans of it all. We're seeing the rise of what scholars are calling civilization states. And these are states that are redrawing their boundaries around ancient civilizational spheres like the Slavic Orthodox world of Imperial Russia, the Sinosphere of ancient China, the rise of Hindu nationalist India, Ottoman Turkey. And so what's happening here is as globalism begins to wane, these three different yet interrelated trends are redrawing the global map and remaking a new political world order, a world order that's far more nationalist, populist, and traditionalist. This is why in the midst of all of the absurd sanity that we're going on in our nation with bumbling Biden and the Trump indictment and the like, we can be sure that the world is indeed moving in a far more conservative and civilizationalist direction, and that will eventually bury our globalist elite. As always, make sure to smack that bell and subscribe. All right. So let's go over here real fast. I right. go to this last scripture. Um, bear me for a second. So I got to go to the apocrypha. Um, hmm. Second entrance, the uh, 16th chapter. All right, let's start at the top. Second entrance, the 16th verse 1. It says, Woe be unto thee, Babylon and Asia. Woe be unto thee, Egypt and Syria. Gird up yourself with clothes of sack and hair. Bewail your children and be sorry for your destruction is at hand. You see? I right, because even though that they're mobilizing and think that they're setting up their new world, Somebody's going to be the top ruler. They're going to have their currency set up. They think that this is what the Lord has in store for them, all right, which is actually false. Okay. What the Lord has in store is that I right, he's getting ready to return. Okay. The Heavenly Father's getting ready to send back his son, Yahushai, all right, and he's getting ready to bring about an end to the rulership of these other nations. They will no longer be set over I his people, okay? It says, A sword is sent upon you, and who may turn it back? A fire is sent among you, and who may quench it? Plagues are sent unto you, and what is he that may drive them away? May any man drive away a hungry lion in the wood, or may any one quench the fire and stubble when it have begun to burn? May one turn again the arrows that is shot of a strong archer. The mighty Lord sendeth the plagues, and who is he that can drive them away? A fire shall go forth from his mouth, I'm sorry, from his wrath, and who is he that may quench it? He shall cast lightning, and who shall not fear? He shall thunder, and who shall not be afraid? The Lord shall threaten, and who shall not be utterly beaten to powder at his presence? The earth quaketh, and the foundation drove, the sea ariseth up with waves, from the deep and the waves of it are troubled and the fishes thereof also before the Lord and before the glory of his power. For strong is his right hand that bendeth the bow. His arrows that he shooteth are sharp and shall not miss when they begin to be shot into the ends of the world. Behold, the plagues are sent and shall not return again until they come upon the earth. The fire is kindled and shall not be put out till it consume the foundation of the earth. 
like as an arrow which is shot of a mighty archer return not backwards even so the plague shall be sent upon earth shall not return again okay so that is what's going to be the last major destruction that is going to take place upon america okay 200 million missiles will be shot into those skies okay all right and they're going to touch down and rain on various parts of the world okay all right and they're not going to return that is what's going to be the end of this place so lord will you have been edified and it's on to the next shalom all.